Before we get started on this, I have to admit that I have been delaying this video for just about a year because I'm a little worried about the reception to it. You'll probably see why here in just a few minutes. Elder Scrolls Online is an action-oriented combat quest-based story-focused MMORPG with world versus world PvP, battleground PvP, dungeons, basically everything you could possibly want from an MMO. And it looks a lot and plays a lot like an Elder Scrolls game. But it's also not an Elder Scrolls game, and it, it doesn't play like an Elder Scrolls game. Are you are you confused yet? Because I really am. And I've been playing this game for years. Translating any game to an MMO is going to come with difficulties. Doing so in a game with as much personal choice as Elder Scrolls, it's usually going to be a recipe for disaster. And for a while, it actually looked like it might be for Elder Scrolls Online. When the game initially launched, it was largely lambasted as being a buggy, horrid mess with a higher than average monthly subscription fee, which they quickly nixed, a baseline story that was for, far from engaging, phasing issues, and much, much more. I actually played it at launch and I was thoroughly unimpressed. I, I bounced off it very quickly, which might be a little bit tied to what, what they were trying to do. As Rich Lambert said, the creative director for ESO, in a retrospective back in 2021. The biggest thing is we were, at the time, building a game where we were trying to satisfy both sides of the coin. To satisfy the MO player, but also the Elder Scrolls player. And further, we didn't have an identity. We didn't really know what game we wanted to be when we first launched because we were so focused on trying to please everybody and be in the middle. Fast forward a decade later, and it's safe to say that ESO at this point has a firm identity. It is an MMO first and an Elder Scrolls game second. But perhaps I should take that a little further and say it is a modern MMO first with the same types of daily type things, the same types of single player focus, the same types of really manufacturing of trying to get you to play the game. It's funny because the most ironic thing of this, of the, doing this review, was that I realized as I was playing that the things that I liked most about Elder Scrolls Online, the things that I would actually say they did really well and continue to do very well, are the RPG points of it, the parts that are the Elder Scrolls parts, and the things that I found to be really lackluster and unimpressive are the MMO parts, the parts that they have kind of been leaning into a bit. And that's why I think Elder Scrolls Online in 2024 is underwhelming. Let's get into it. Elder Scrolls has taken great pains to open up their game and make it feel more free. Freedom like slaying dragons at level two. So maybe, maybe a little bit less, less free than that. All right, you scaly little bastard. You thought I was done. You thought I was dead. Little did you know that I can just respawn and, and, and rush at you over and over and over again. I mean, <laughs> I've just been false alarm. You know, I, I, I had it all along. I knew I had it all along. Now, see, this wasn't just to show you my dragon slaying process. It is a key component of why I found Elder Scrolls Online so underwhelming. And it all has to do with an update they made just a couple years after launch called One Tamriel. Back in 2016, just two years after launch, they added perhaps the most divisive and honestly game-defining systems into ESO. It turns the traditional MMO leveling system on its head. And personally, I freaking hate it. It's something that I probably should like because I am a strong proponent of removing hard barriers when it comes to playing with friends. I think it's a great way to encourage more socializing in MMOs. Let me play with my level 50 friend as a level 5. So what if it's a little bit unbalanced for one side or the other? Generally, I suggest a mentor system for this like a down leveling system. And in a sense, it kind of helps with it. The one Tamriel update does ease those barriers, and it's a positive of that update. But what was lost is so much more. 
One Tamriel will raise or lower level based things in the game based off of your level. Quests, NPCs, everything. It, it, it moves it so that you can do what you want. You can pick what zone you want to go level in, whether you're a level 5 or a level 50. Everything is just adjusted to you. But what this does is it sacrifices identity. Identity of the zone, level identity, power identity, NPC identity. But there are people that really like this, and I gotta give some, some space to that. Proponents will argue that it brings more freedom, even if this was losing some of this identity. As Justin Olivetti, one of my favorite writers over on Massively put in their 10 things to love about ESO back in 2021. The level agnostic design. I wasn't that big of a fan of how the single player Elder Scrolls games would scale content up or down to your character's level, but in the MMO, it works so well. The one Tamriel change delivered the entire game on a platter to players, giving them the freedom of choice in where they quested and who they quested with, all without having to worry that they get in over their heads by wandering into the wrong zone. But that's kind of the thing. I want to worry about getting over my head by wandering into the wrong zone. I want to work towards getting to that zone. Having the whole game given to you, as, as is kind of happening here, does kind of take away from some of that sense of adventure and accomplishment, because what it does is it means the entire game is the same. When you're slaying dragons at level 2, it really makes killing some bandits at level 30 feel pretty, pretty anticlimactic. But before I get the entire ESO community upset with me, Let's talk about some of the positive things and one positive thing that they do incredibly well, like I was kind of referring to with the single player part of it is story. When I began playing, I wanted to start fresh to get an entirely new impression. I'd played ESO on and off since it was in beta. I'd gotten bits and pieces of the story all over, and I remembered from the start being amazed by just how much voice acting there is in the game, how many fully fleshed out quests some of which you just happen to happen upon as you're going through the world. It presented a world worth exploring with a strong narrative, even if it was a bit of a single player narrative. ESO straddles the line between the chosen one tropes and world building. Playing the most recent expansion for the first impressions, Necrom, really put the whole new, whole, this, it's all into a whole new perspective. It takes you deep into the stories of the Dramora. I mean, hell, at one point I even signed a damn contract with one, this is where ESO really sets itself apart from some other MMOs. Not only does it have a strong, coherent story that usually plays across a year or longer, it also gives you some, the same kind of world building you expect in Elder Scrolls games through books, side quests, dungeon lore, and so much more. The game feeds you story, and it really makes you want to pause, stop, and learn more about this beautiful world that Zenimax has brought to life. Characters have depth, whether they're a side quest character or a main story character. And I would encourage you, if you're giving the game a shot, to pause and listen. The acting is often top notch and the stories will surprise you. Like this journey through a cave that tells the story of a very unfortunate necromancer. I found myself enjoying each new thing that I got to find out in this this little self-contained story that was basically from a side quest. Learning about what had happened and how it had branched off. I don't... It's not fair. You were so young. So young. This quest was... Like, a, it was storytelling. In a way that I think is done incredibly well, especially for an MMO. It goes to another point of what Justin over at Massively OP liked about ESO. The real meat and potatoes of ESO, at least to me, is the enormous buffet of incredible quests that it has. Instead of trying to drown us in a flood of mindless tasks, this MMO's approach was to deliver fewer quests, but to have them be longer, more story driven, and usually part of an arc. And there are still a whole lot of them, from the main storylines to the smaller missions to dailies. I get giddy when I think of how many quests I have left to do because I know that so many of them will be great experiences. This is exactly how I felt when I was questing in ESO. They felt meaningful and important. It wasn't just go kill 10 things, get experience and some randomized loot. The stories themselves were in the quests. 
And because they were acted in a lot of ways, or because they were environmental, like, for example, in this quest where I snuck up and found this person also sneaking, the world itself was bringing the quest forward to you. There's just one problem with it all. With all this great storytelling in the MMO, it gets kind of lost in the treadmill that is the MMO. An MMO that is streamlined to the point of lacking traction. When playing ESO, I often feel like I'm being punished for not leaning in to build supremacy and gear sets. Something that becomes abundantly clear if you ever try PvP, or if you join a dungeon with random people. The game feels tailored toward min-maxing any time you interact with others largely due to what feels like overwhelming power gaps despite the aforementioned one Tamriel update. Without level demarcation, power gaps take place in champion levels, gear, and abilities, and the differences are astronomical. I witnessed one player solo a veteran dungeon while the rest of us struggled. He even commented on it and was pretty damn toxic about it. I saw an entire normal dungeon collapse in six minutes. Yes, six freaking minutes for an entire dungeon, just sprinting through it. I used my sprint key more than my attack keys. For a dungeon and it was a dungeon that presumably had the same great storytelling there was voice lines going off there were scenes set scenes going off it, it didn't matter though everything was just dying just done because it was all streamlined because the dungeon itself had essentially become a daily a daily quest one where you don't actually engage with it at all on, on any level you just want the experience that you get at the end of it i might as well have just been playing afk auto battler or some shit like that honestly when you get to a point like this, when dungeons are like this in your MMO, what is the difference between it and a mobile game where you just press log in? And no, this is not a problem that is unique to ESO. It is a problem that is pretty prevalent in lots of modern MMOs. I mean, it goes back to this idea of shrinking down the dungeon, shrinking down the playtime until you have these little, little small, like small vignettes of here we go, go do this thing. But in doing so, in a lot of ways, we kind of lost what the point of the adventure was. Because you no longer care about the adventure, you care about the reward at the end, and you have to get that reward to keep up, otherwise you're going to start missing things. But what is it you're missing? An item level? And before uh, before there's, you know, talk about, oh, you don't know, you're, you're doing the wrong dungeons in ESO. I had a very long conversation with my co-host on Skip the Dialogue, Desrin, about this, about how, you know, he, he was wanting me to do better in dungeons. Well, I did. It, it didn't go very well. It's very toxic, un, uninspired experience that took 17 minutes instead of six. And then and then it was about how, OK, well, maybe it wasn't the right dungeon. But then I have to put it on Zenimax, how they have decided to construct their dungeons, how they have decided to construct their reward cycle. Players are going to do things in ways that developers don't want them to. They're going to consume content too fast and they're going to continue, they're going to find ways to optimize. That is just how MMOs work. It is on the developer to find a way to still make it rewarding to do it in unoptimized ways. And I don't feel like that's how it's been done. And who knows, perhaps that's just me wanting to, to do better, but it just, it, it feels like it's just too rewarding to do it without care and less rewarding to do it with care. This all combines with combat that to me has always been an issue in ESO. I know there are some huge fans of the combat in ESO, but to me it has always felt a bit too spammy because it felt like they took this combat system and this combat system and mashed them together. You have a, a clicky combat system where you're clicking your mouse all the time and trying to get attacks off uh, depending on whatever you're doing. And then at the same time, you're also trying to get all your abilities firing. You're trying to manage that while also trying to manage your um, your your statuses and things like that. And every every guide I read was all about maximizing your statuses and, and all these things. It wasn't about like it didn't seem to 
have anything that you would kind of expect with an, you know, more like an action oriented. Even dodging felt like perfunctory. It doesn't really seem to matter that much if you were doing the aforementioned statuses well enough or if you had the right gear set or whatever. It felt like the combat was deceptively shallow. You had all these choices, but it didn't really matter. And you had to just try, you were just trying to keep maintain things. It became a maintenance simulator for me in combat and less of an active combat thing. And again, that's that's really just my opinion about the combat. I just it's not something I've ever enjoyed. I much prefer a system more like Guild Wars 2, which leans further into the let's okay the ability side of it and not so much the the clicky side of it. If you're gonna have action combat, I would rather have you know, one way or the other. Make the the clicking with your mouse the way that you do damage and, and then focus on things like dodging and blocking active combat that way or combinations of some sort, kind of like a, a Black Desert Online. If you're going to do the abilities side, lean more towards the abilities with uh, with combat like you have with uh, with Guild Wars 2. I think like the main thing that gets me is this combination between light attacks and heavy attack. It's, it's just it's never made sense to me. It's always felt like a cumbersome combat system. And I just want to play the stories. Let's end with some quick pros and cons, and I have included the link down below to the Justin's article on the 10 great things about ESO to kind of give a more positive picture of, of ESO than I'm giving here, because it's not like it's a bad game. It's just perhaps not the game for me, despite me trying it for 10 years. So the pros are that it's beautiful. The graphics still hold up, but it's more than that. It's how the game world itself is designed. The zones have life to them. They are geographically distinct and feel real. The world itself is one of the great highlights of ESO. It has great quests with voice acting. Some will even have branching options, like one particular quest where I was given the opportunity to lie about my purpose if I so choose. After all, running errands for a Dramora is generally frowned upon. The quests are built in a way that makes you want to keep playing to find out more. It's more similar to what you'd think of in an RPG than the usual fetch quests and kill quests. Going back to the world, it feels wide and expansive and it begs you to explore it because you are rewarded for exploring it. There are so many side quest books and things that you can find anywhere, all over the place. It's downright gluttonous how much the world has to offer to you just by you exploring it. And I do have to give a nod to the level agnostic system because it does, even if it has a huge negative to it, it takes care of one thing. It takes care of that barrier that prevents you from playing with your friends. If, if I have been playing for years and I want to play with you, we can play. But switching over to the negative side, again, the, the one Tamriel has stripped away the identity of zones. It has stripped away the fear that comes from going into a zone that is higher level than you. The sense of achievement, because you can quite literally just go anywhere you want to and things will be the same level. It also takes away something that a lot of MMO players kind of enjoy, which is going back to old zones that they had been able to uh, that had struggled with before and just completely conquering them because now you are stronger. It basically just smooths out that whole vertical line that you had of, of progression in a negative towards monetization. I have to talk about inventory management because it is frustrating as hell. It feels unnecessarily small, which incentivizes the crafting bag, which is tied to the MMO subscription. It is very heavily pushed part of the monetization strategy, and it's a real frustration. Even if the game like kind of works as a free to play MMO, it still feels like to get the best experience from ESO, it's better. You're better off just subscribing to the game. And that's not even to talk about the all the monetization stuff, how much how much they have in their store, because there's a lot. We'll round out the negatives with one new thing and two things I've already talked about. First, it's going to be the itemization. Items feel kind of randomly generated. Many items lack identity, especially as you proceed through the game. And then you hit end game and item sets and their set bonuses become incredibly important, making or breaking your ability to function in social activities. It becomes the progression. And then again, the combat. Some love may love it, but I personally loathe it. It's just not for me. I, I, I hate combat in ESO. It is like the worst parts of each combat system I can come up with. I think more action oriented combat games like Guild Wars 2 or New World have managed this a bit better. And then dungeons, the final final negative is dungeons. 
they're underutilized. They are a freaking daily task that it just doesn't fit my idea of what a dungeon should be. Somehow, the dungeons in ESO became less challenging than dungeons in World of Warcraft. They became more of a daily quest in ESO for me than in WoW. And WoW was the one that's often pointed to as having this huge problem with how dungeons work unless you're at a uh, heroic or mythic and this idea this this constant idea that's been pushed of well you there's there there's the veteran level but then the veteran level oh it's not that that one's not that one's an easy veteran level dungeon you actually need to try this harder veteran level dungeon that's on Zenimax. I, no like that that is 100 percent on Zenimax as far as i'm concerned their dungeon design plus the reward system they have for their dungeon is the issue not necessarily just all player behavior elder scrolls online isn't a bad game it has a lot of points going for it i just personally came away from it underwhelmed and i have been every single time i have tried it for 10 years at this point i'll install it play it for a few weeks then uninstall it i don't necessarily get excited for new expansions but i'll go in and try the new areas try the new the, the new classes i I, enjoy, I was excited about the dragons until again that became kind of you know a random thing that doesn't really happen that much and i like the necromancer i like the arcanist but i always come away from elder Scrolls online feeling like it's a game that pushes too much into the min max side of the mmo it pushes too much into that side of well you got to get this item this item this item and this item to do anything especially once you hit max level honestly if i were to say one thing about elder scrolls online i have had more fun in elder scrolls online leveling than being max level it will continue to be an mmo that is in the the top mmos until someone dethrones it but it's just it's an mmo that i think at this point is just not for me but that's just my opinion and i'm just some guy on on youtube who talks about mmos and has played way too much everquest so what so let us know down in the comment section below what do you think what are some of the things that you love about eso or what are the things you don't like so much just don't be a dick to each other my name is redbear flynn and if you want to see a little bit more of the discussion i had with desrin who was a adamant defender of the elder Scrolls online's dungeons we did that in our podcast right here called Skip the Dialogue. And yeah, we do know what the acronym is for Skip the Dialogue. Wasn't didn't, wasn't well thought out. My name is Red Flynn. Thank you so much for watching, and I really appreciate you being here, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.